Good morning. My name is Marissa and I am the creator behind Missouri Makes. Here on my channel, I like to show you what I'm working on currently or what I've been working on that I've completed um, crochet, knitting, sewing wise. I haven't done sewing in a little while. I'm hoping once I get my office set up, I'll be able to do more sewing. But it's been a minute since I have come on here and done a podcast. It's been a it's been a hot minute. But today is January 5th, I believe. I don't, my phone I'm using my phone to record. I don't know why I'm looking for it. But today I believe is January 5th. We are in a new year. I can't believe it's already 2023. It's going to take me a minute to start writing 2023 on stuff. So that's that's going to be fun. But I thought I would get on here and start the new year off with a podcast and kind of get you caught up on everything. Um, thought maybe I would show you some of my, or tell you, some of my resolutions. They're not anything, like, big, because I don't, I'm not one for resolutions, really. But um, I want to be more intentional with my business Missouri makes and trying to be more consistent with everything so that is my biggest resolution I guess you would call it but it's just me trying to be less lazy I guess but let's go ahead and get started uh, you want to start with finished objects I think Really, all I have is finished objects with me today. I do have some stuff that I've been working on that is not here at the moment. Because it's been so long since I've done a podcast, I'm not sure what I've seen you and what I, what I have showed you and what I haven't. But I'm going to show you some finished objects. Um, let's see. Now, I got some new yarn since the last time I podcasted. Um... One of which I'm going to show you because I finished an object. I bought these as sweater quantities. And the original thought was to make the, how do you pronounce it, Halu? H-A-L-U by, it's not Caitlin Hunter. Is it Boyland Knit Works? I believe that's it. Um, and I the first yarn that I ordered was like a burnt orange color and she uses two yarns held together to make a DK weight I think it was a fingering and a mohair well I didn't have I didn't buy a fingering and a mohair I bought something else I'll have to show you the yarn sometime I don't have it with me today but I got through the neck and half of the lace work and then realized I was off by quite a bit and so that was a big disappointment not only was I off I had broken two or three needle sets or two or three needles in the process of working this project and I was just I was tired of it and Finally, after I counted my stitches and realized I was way off, I'm, I just gave up. I'm like, I'm going to have to take it out. There's no fixing it. There's no fudging. I'm off by quite a bit. I need to just, I just need to take it out. So, my husband, I've, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw the little video of him undoing my yarn. Um, he helped me undo it, and it was a beast. It did not frog easy, and I had to throw away a little bit of yarn because I couldn't get it untangled, and he couldn't either. And so, that kind of put me off because I had bought enough yarn to make the size that I wanted, and now I don't have enough to make the size I wanted. I mean, I could go down a size probably and be okay, but I had chosen the larger size because, well... I'm pregnant and I am not the size that I was before so I chose a larger size to accommodate for that and hopefully 
things wouldn't be tight and I wouldn't feel uncomfortable in it because it's something that I would want to wear a lot. And so that was really disappointing. And then I got this yarn in and I started working on it. And I don't remember what happened, but something was off again. It was completely different from what it was the first time. I don't know why why it was wrong. I can't remember, but it was wrong. And uh, I had to take it out. And when I took it out, I was just like, forget it. It is not the time to make this sweater. I put it on the back burners and I will have to work on this sweater again another day. I don't know why I was having so much trouble with this sweater, but I was. And so I decided to take this yarn and make something else with it. I got a sweater's quantity or when I say sweater's quantity, I mean a the amount of yarn that I need to make my size sweater. Sweater's quantity is different for everybody because it depends on what size it is that you're going to be making. It's kind of like a universal term. But um, I got, I'll show you the yarn first. This is Palette Fingering Weight by Knit Picks. I don't know if it's backwards on the screen or not. I'll have to look at it whenever I go to edit it. But uh, the name of the yarn is Douglas Fir, F-I-R. It is not a hunter green, but it's like a really deep, rich green. And there's 231 yards per 50 grams. Let's see what the contents are. 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's got the Okio text which means it's supposed to be tested and safe for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that means that it's, it's been tested against harmful substances or something and it's safe for babies and stuff. I'm not sure. I know that people go on about it. It says it's made in Peru, which I think is pretty neat. I either got this from Knit Picks or We Crochet whenever they were doing their big Black Friday sale. Um, if you don't know, Knit Picks and We Crochet are sister companies. They are they are run by the same people. Just one is knit oriented and one is crochet oriented. And so, um, same people, same company, just different websites. But yeah, that's Palette Yarn. This is a fingering weight. And then I got this yarn to pair with it, which is a loft, A-L-O-F-T. It is a lace weight. It is a mohair. Uh, the name on this color is Kenai, K-E-N-A-I. I don't know if I pronounced that right. There's 260 yards per 25 grams. 72% super kid mohair, 28% silk. And I have absolutely never worked with mohair before. This is, when I got this, this is the first time I had touched mohair ever. And I gotta say, I really like it. Um, I think it's gonna be something that I continue to order. And my opinion of mohair before I had messed with it was that it was an expensive yarn. And, I mean, it is. Because you're pairing it with another yarn, which makes that project cost more. And I'm cheap when it comes to purchasing things. I tend to buy the cheapest thing on the shelf because I just, I do. And so I was glad that I was able to get this during the Black Friday sale. The Black Friday sale was huge. They had a lot of stuff and some really great prices. Um, I want to say that, uh, two, four, I probably got six or seven of the palettes and probably the same amount in the mohair. I'm not quite sure. 
I think I got one more of one than the other. Probably this one since it doesn't have as much yardage as this one. And I'm going to say that my bill was probably around $50 to get both of them. So you, you really can't beat that because most um, natural fibers is expensive. And so being able to get natural fiber yarn for a cheap price, that was... That was a really great deal. And if you look, it doesn't really look like it would go together. And I was kind of skeptical at the beginning. But the YouTube channels that I watch, they always, they pair a mohair with a yarn and to usually tone the yarn down. And sometimes they pick a color that's completely off from the base yarn and it works really well so I was thinking maybe just maybe it'll be okay well when I was knitting on it it was perfectly fine I loved it and when that didn't work and I had to take it out um, I decided to crochet something with it I have not woven in my ends yet and I think it turned out just fine as crochet as well And I, my favorite part about it is this point here. Everything is kind of blocked out. Instead of gradually increasing and it has a slope, it is like little blocks. If you notice, like right here, it's all, and so it's, I don't know, it's, I really like it. Let me see. And you could use it as a shawl. My intention was to wear it as a scarf. Because I like scarves. I like the, what do they call them, banana scarves? I really like those to tuck into my jackets. And so that's what I had planned on doing. Um, this has been blocked already. As bl blocked as I'm going to do it at least. Um... I don't, there's some things that I do a hard block on, which is taking pins. Oh. All right, let's see if that decides to stay. What was I talking about? Hard blocking. Okay, so hard blocking for me is taking and soaking the project and then pinning it out. And there's some things that I do do that with. Because this scarf or shawl is so long, I only had three blocking mats over here at the house. The rest of them are at the office. And so I didn't have enough blocking boards to stretch it out and pin it. Which really it didn't need to be pinned. It's fine as is. I am a firm believer in you block it the way you would every time. And I know me, and every time I wash it, I am not going to take the time to pin out each individual little piece. I'm going to wash it and lay it out to dry. And so if that's the way I'm going to do it every time, then I'm not going to do a hard block at the beginning, you know? So um, it laid on a board, my blocking mats, for one or two days and then because it was mostly dry when I picked it up and then I took and draped it over like the the shower rod so that it could dry the rest of the way because of where I had the blocking mats and stuff things had to be moved so I just took and draped it over something I wouldn't take and drape it over the shower rod or anything else when it was completely wet because it will warp the stitches but because it was mostly dry I went ahead and just draped it over um but yeah I am working on the pattern for this it is it's a simple pattern I I love the you can't tell it in the 
camera, I don't think, but there's ridges because I go through the back loop or the third loop. And so I, it's got a little bit of texture without it being overly textured because I'm one that I like a little bit of texture. I like it to be uh, a little out of my comfort zone, but I'm not one that just goes all out and has things wild because it's not something that I wear on a daily basis. I don't like, I don't like having wild clothes. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I'm one that I don't like to be seen. I like to be in the crowd and just kind of blend in. I don't like to be looked at. So I don't, I don't like wearing stuff that is out of my comfort zone. But that is coming soon. Um, I got to weigh it and figure out how much of each of these that I used in it and write the pattern up. And then this will be out for grabsies. Mm, we'll go on with this one. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this. I posted a picture yesterday, I believe. I've had this done for a little while, and to be honest, I have the matching hat to go with it. And I haven't taken pictures of it yet because I want to grade the hat to fit multiple heads. And so that's going to take some time to sit down and math things out. So, um, the hat will come later, but I do have, I have made a matching set. What I love about this, and I've made these in the past, not this specifically, but this style. Um, oh, I think, I believe, I wrote the, I wrote all the information down, but I think I used a four millimeter crochet hook for that, if that's important right now. I don't know, but while I'm remembering, um, but made this style before but in a different stitch and color but whenever I saw this yarn I instantly thought that it needed to be a scarf or yeah I, I would say it's a scarf it's too long to be a cowl I think because when I think of a cowl I think of a tight fitted piece around my neck which you can double wrap this and it can be tight fitted um but I I think it's a scarf and not only is it a scarf it's infinity and it's got that twist in it that whenever you wrap it it looks very very pretty i'll show you what it looks like on isn't that pretty i just love that but it's like the granny stitch inspired. It's very simple. It is another beginner friendly pattern. And with it being beginner friendly and the yarn is on the more affordable side, this pattern here would be great for beginners who are just learning how to crochet. I'm not one to put a level label on my patterns like beginner intermediate advanced I don't like doing that because I believe that if you want to make something it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what stitch it is what it is that you have to do if you want to learn how to make it I believe 100% that you can if you take the time to learn um, so I don't like to put, oh, this is for a beginner or an, in I don't like doing that. Plus I don't like labeling myself as a beginner, intermediate or advanced crocheter, knitter, whatever. I don't like labeling myself like that. So I don't like putting those labels. I know people ask and they want to know, and I don't mind saying, you know, this is more of a beginner friendly pattern, but I honestly don't like putting that kind of label on my patterns because it tells you whether or not you're going to feel comfortable making it when you're not going to know until you try it for yourself you know um because this while it is more of a beginner friendly pattern even with me 
crocheting for the past oh, 10, 11 years, I would still love and want this around my neck. You know, I do have it around my neck. But even with me crocheting for as long as I have crocheted, I would still want this around my neck, even though it's super easy. It doesn't challenge me. This is one of those projects that there it's a potato chip project. You can sit at your couch, watch your favorite show and make this and probably make it probably in one to two nights because this is a worsted weight yarn. It and the amount of yarn you use and uh length or height that you have in your scarf all depends on you and what you want you can make this uh bigger you can make it smaller you can take and make it longer so that you can wrap it more than more than this or have it down further um this project here is very versatile it can be done many different ways according to what you want and so that is something that I love to make in my patterns. I know that some of my, a lot of my patterns are more on a beginner side, but be, but the beginner side of patterns, a lot of them are very versatile where you can uh, switch things up to fit you easier than what a very advanced pattern that's got a bunch of lace and, you know, I like I like this because I can change things up to suit me, to fit me and my wardrobe and my style. And so I like making these kind of patterns. So, and then on top of it, this yarn is sparkly and I love sparkle yarn. And not only is it sparkly, it's actually pretty soft. I, I don't have any itching around my neck. I don't know if I'm sensitive to that kind of stuff though. I don't, I don't notice any sensitivity around my neck when I put stuff on. So I'm going to say that I'm not very sensitive to it. But the, I know with sparkle yarns, sometimes they get a little crunchy feeling. So um, that I do look out for stuff like that. Not because it's a sensitivity, but because I just like certain feels. I like certain feels of yarn. Um... They don't make me itchy. I just, I don't like certain, certain feelings. And so this is Yarnby Soft and Sleek Low Peel Fiber. It is a 99% low peel acrylic, 1% metallic polyester. It's a worsted weight yarn. There's 186 yards per skein or 114 grams per 170 meters. I don't follow the meters, really. Um, I usually go by grams or yards, but I know some people like the meterage. Let's see. Recommended hook is a six millimeter. I believe I use a 5.5, which as you can see is just fine. Um, this yarn is only three ninety nine. Um, okay, it's only three ninety nine regular price, and I usually buy my Hobby Lobby yarn whenever they have their thirty percent off sale. The only time I buy their yarn full price is if I have orders that I have to complete and in a certain amount of time, because they have their yarn thirty percent off every other week. This week is not one of those weeks. It'll be next week whenever they have their 30% off. But even at $3.99, this is very affordable. So um, I believe I used two skeins for this scarf, which is not bad. So that means that eight bucks plus tax for a scarf. And you, you really can't beat that. At Walmart, if you went to buy a scarf, you would probably pay $10 or more for a scarf that's not going to hold up and last very long. So having a handmade piece like this, you really can't beat it. 
But yeah, I think I used a 5.5 on this. I've got everything written down. I just don't have it near me. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I got an order. I have a few orders that I have to complete, but I'm working on one of them. Uh, let me go get the pattern. Okay, so I'm going to start out by saying I am not an amigurumi crocheter. I don't, I like the finished product. I'm just not good at making it, like coming up with my own patterns. I am not good at amigurumi. And then on top of it, amigurumi usually hurts my hands to make, so I don't, I don't do amigurumi very often. But I do have a couple orders, and uh, I, I didn't know how to make it myself. I mean, not to say I couldn't figure it out, but I want honestly just wanted to get it done. I didn't want to do any guessing work. I just wanted to get the get the finished item done for my customer. So I went and bought a pattern, and I'm all for uh, supporting other designers. I I'm 100%. I buy patterns all the time because I feel that if I want somebody to support me, I have to be willing to support somebody else. So I try to do my part in supporting other designers. This designer, I don't know if she's got other places that she sells her patterns. I don't even know if she's a she because I didn't look into uh, the profile very much. But the account is called Rika Crochet, R-I-K-A, not crochet, Rika Craft, R-I-K-A-C-R-A-F-T, and it's on Etsy is where I got it, but my customer wanted a Pooh Bear. She is obsessed with Pooh Bear. She recently had a baby, most adorable baby ever, and her theme for her baby is Winnie the Pooh. And because this is a paid for pattern, I can't show you the rest of it. I'm not going to give out that information because that would be wrong. But that is what it's supposed to look like. Now, they, they use yarn art jeans. I don't know what that is. But I think they use a number two yarn. With a 2.2 millimeter crochet hook and 8 millimeter safety eyes. And then they have the polyfill. Now, they also recommend putting plastic canvas in the bottoms of the feet, which is not listed in the materials, which I was kind of disappointed on. But... I didn't even use the plastic canvas. I just crocheted and did my own thing. And I don't think it needs it. I think it's okay. But I have I finished the crocheting part. I've got to do the sewing part. But I want to do a couple videos. And so I am waiting a little while before I do that. Actually, I probably will do the videos today sometime. The place that I do my videoing right now while my office is being redone is got a lot a lot of sunlight and so I'm waiting for the sun to move a little bit before I do my videos but here's the body I used a worsted weight yarn they said that if they if I use the same materials as them the finished size is 25 centimeters I am not sure what that is I know 10 centimeters 10 centimeters is 4 inches. So it would be 8, 9, 10 and a half inches. Wouldn't that be it? Maybe. I don't know. But I use worsted weight with a 4 millimeter crochet hook. And this is what I got. This is the body of Poo. My husband informed me that these look like bloody fingers, but there's Pooh's arms. 
Isn't that so cute? Uh, I take that back. I said I was done with crocheting part. I do need to make the brown piece for the nose. But I'm not going to make that until I get everything sewed because I know me and I'm going to lose that little piece. But I've been keeping it all in the head of Pooh. Um, this is the snout part, the nose. And then these are the little ears. The head's bigger than I thought it would be. But I guess it goes. Um... I'm not going to put the stuffing in here until I'm ready to sew the ears and stuff on because, like I said, I've been keeping everything kind of put in here to keep everything together because I, would, I, I, I forgot, I forget things easily before pregnancy. I really forget things now with pregnancy, so I try to keep everything put together, but... I think that it turned out really, really well. Um, the only thing that um, I had problems with, this pattern is very straightforward. It is a, it tells you, it talks to you like any other amigurumi pattern. I mean, it's very, very straightforward. Um, there's not a whole lot of details. Now, they do have photo tutorials here, too, and I'm not going to show them because it tells the pattern, too, but it's got photo tutorials here, um, and it tells you how many crochet, how many single crochets apart for the ears and how many single crochets apart for the eyes. It does go into detail like that. Um, it tells you to sew the snout between two eyes, stuff firmly before closing. You know, it it does go through. And it looks like she's got a video tutorial video tutorial here on how to sew the nose onto the head. Um, it does go into detail like that. Um, the only problem that I had with this pattern is whenever you go to make the feet here. You make one foot, you put it to the side, you don't, um, you don't fasten off really. I mean, you keep everything there and then you go to make the second one and then you attach them together to create the body. And it was kind of, it didn't go, I don't think that it went into detail enough about how to, um, attach the, the feet because it tells you to um, single crochet so many stitches and then place a stitch marker and that's your new stitch marker and then the next one it tells you to chain so many to before attaching but it's like I wasn't sure if I was supposed to do the same exact thing on both feet when it came to single crocheting so many before the next before placing the stitch marker um, I had to guess a little bit on the feet, and the feet are off by a little bit, if you look, see? But nobody's going to notice. That baby's not going to notice. I think that for what it is, it turned out perfectly fine. In fact, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the option on my website if somebody else wants to purchase a Winnie the Pooh already made. I think I'm going to put that option on the website so that um, so that you can purchase our, the stuffed animal already made. Of course, I'll give all of the rights and stuff to the designer and link back to them because I am not that person that doesn't give credit where credit is due. Um, but I won't I won't be making a whole bunch of these like right at one time. What I'll do is I'll put on the website how many I'm willing to make and um they will be made to order. So when you purchase it, then I'll go and purchase the yarn, make the item and um make it and send it to you. Now this, because I worked on this constantly, I started this Monday. 
either Monday or Tuesday of this week. So I got this done in three days, two to three days. I mean, I know that I still got the sewing part to do, but that won't take me very long. The crocheting part I did in two to three days because I worked on it constantly. So be, for it being made to order, it's not like you're going to have to wait months to to get it unless there is a high demand for them, you know, which I'm not going to put the option of um, a bunch of, I think my cat, yep, my cat's at the window. Um, I'm not going to put the option of a bunch of them. Like there's not going to be 10 available that you can purchase. There'll be two or three. So you won't have to wait a whole long period of time before you get your your stuffed animal so but I thought that was cute one thing that I am changing on this pattern this pattern calls for safety eyes I don't have safety eyes my option would be buttons but because this is going to a three-month-old baby um, I'm not going to do that I'm going to put uh, embroidered eyes on Winnie the Pooh so that I don't have to worry about the baby swallowing a safety eye or a button or something like that I am going to do everything uh, through sewing that way everything is safe for her because if she's not already she will be soon in that stage of putting everything in her mouth and I don't want to I don't want her to get hurt because she is the cutest baby ever uh, me and my husband steal her all the time when we go to church so I told her mama that I was going to steal her until my baby comes. So, we do. We steal her every time we go to church. But, yeah. The yarn that I used, again, is an affordable yarn. For a worsted and 4 millimeter, excuse me, 4 millimeter crochet hook. This is what I have left of one skein of yarn. So, all it took was one skein of I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby in the colorway Sun Gold. This is a 100% acrylic yarn, number four weight, and there's 355 yards per 199 grams. So, it took almost a full skein of yellow. This is what I have left of the red. It took little to no red. Uh, the red color is just red. Red number 40. Um, when I go to put these on the website, this is the yarn that will be used. Unless you specifically ask for something else. Which, I mean, you can. because But the price may be different if it's a different price yarn. Um, but... This will be what it's used. It's 100% acrylic, which means that you don't have to worry about sensitivities and stuff for babies. And that's one of the reasons why I chose this. Because one, it is super, super soft. I love, I love this yarn. Two, it's 100% acrylic. You ain't got to worry about uh, your baby breaking out. So, there's that. And then the brown is just scrap brown that I have lying around, which again is 100% acrylic. Um, I, I will keep everything the same content. This looks like it is Bernat Satin. Yeah, and it's 100% acrylic yarn. Nothing to worry about. But you can choose if you want uh, buttons or safety eyes instead of embroidered eyes. That all you have to do is message or e message me, email me, whatever, and we can work that out. I do. I I do. Custom orders, like if there's something specific that you want done to it, I am more than willing to customize it specifically for you. All you have to do is get a hold of me, and we can work a deal out. Something else that I love about Amigurumi or uh, items that get stuffed like this is you can put all your tails on the inside and you ain't got to weave nothing in so the only tails that I'm gonna have to weave in is the ones that I use to sew in the bear sew in all the parts 
so that's exciting. I ain't got to do much hiding ends. Okay, so we are at 40 minutes. And I'm going to quickly get this over with so that you can go on about your business. Um, I thought that I would take and show you what my intentions or my goals for the year is. Um, this is... This is not a happy planner. I don't know what it's called. It just says 52 Agenda on it. But I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's just a 2023 calendar. If you look, it's got the days with the dates. Um, it tells you here what holidays are in this month. You can write down special occasions and birthdays here. And then you've got your calendar. So this is what I got for this year so that I can try to be more intentional. Uh, my first one, like I had talked about earlier, is to be more intentional with my business. Because I am now at 29 weeks pregnant. I am no longer working a public job. I am, I am staying at home and I will be a stay-at-home mom for as long as I can be. Um, and so... I need to be more intentional with everything here. That goes for my business. That goes for my home. That goes for everything. Because we do, if you haven't noticed, in the background there is rooster sounds. So we are working on a little farm. And so our little farm right now has roosters and chickens or hens. We have rabbits and we have ducks. And... If he's still around, we have little Banny. So we are slowly, gradually getting animals. This year I'm going to have a garden. And so we've got all of these things. And then on top of it, I have the responsibility of keeping my house. Because my husband works full time and he shouldn't have to do it. So, or at least he shouldn't have to do the majority of it. It should be my responsibility. And I try to make sure it's my responsibility. Um, but I have all of these things, my home life and then my work life. I'm trying to be more intentional and get things done. So, and not procrastinate as much. And then on top of it, we have a baby on the way. So I really need to get things in order because I have less than 11 weeks left. If the baby waits that long which could the baby could go over my due date the baby could go before my come before my due date my due date is march 22nd so we ain't got much longer to go um so i'm trying to get things in order and do things right but my second one is to create more things that i love to wear Instead of just creating to create and make whatever, I want to make things with more thought behind them and things that I or my family will wear instead of just make to make because um, I, I want to have things in my wardrobe that is useful. I don't want to just have things lying around because I made whatever. I want things to be useful for my home or for somebody else. So that is a goal. Um, this year I will be focusing like I did last year, which I didn't get as much done as I'd like to have. Um, but this year I will be focusing on destashing my old yarn so that I can bring in new yarn. So I've got a, I've got two shelves plus some of yarn and I need to start working on getting it out so that I can bring new in. And so I'm going to be working on destashing and doing projects that, um, take small amounts or will work for scrap projects basically and get my because I do have a lot of one skeins so I need to work on getting my destash I, I need to work on destashing my old yarn 
Um, another goal is to get 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. That way we can get things monetized and things going in order. And I would like to work on my blog a little bit more and try to focus uh, focus some of my energy over on my blog and get that built up because I would eventually like to get a better blog and get that monetized as well and try to get the ball rolling on that. But in order to do that, I have to put the time and effort into it. So those are two things that I would like to accomplish this year is a thousand subscribers so if you know somebody that would be interested in a podcast a knitting or crochet podcast or i do crochet or knit tutorials i do days in life i do different things like that if you know somebody that is interested in that share this video it it'll help me out in the long run to be able to uh, help support my family and not only that it's something that I enjoy this is something that I love and I enjoy to do and I think that with what the world has become this this is something that we need in our lives something that brings us joy not specifically crochet or knitting just something that brings us joy and this brings me joy being able to make things with my hands and being able to share it with you, it brings me joy. And so, share. Share this video. Share this channel. Um, I try to share other people's stuff as much as I can because I want people to be able to experience different platforms, different websites, different channels, and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah. That's... That's about it. I would like to look into doing festivals more this year, but that requires being more intentional with my stuff and um, having the product to do festivals. So that will come later this year. Hopefully around fall, I'll be able to do some festivals and get that going. But yeah, I think that is all that I have for you today. I was so afraid that I wasn't going to have very much to talk about that this video wouldn't be very long and it's already 50 minutes long. So, but yeah, I think that's it. If you have any questions or if there is a tutorial, like a stitch tutorial that you would like to see, you can always leave a comment down in the comment section or, uh, email me and I will get back to you when I can this the yarn for this the aloft and palette is a knit picks slash we crochet yarn and if you want to purchase that for this pattern or any other pattern there will be links down in the description box down below it is an affiliate link which means that if you click on it and purchase that yarn or any other yarn on that website with my link I will get a small percentage, which will help this channel, but it will cost you no extra money to do so. It They just take out from whatever you bought. They take that money and give me a small percentage of it. You don't pay any extra for it. And so um, that is one way to help support this channel, plus get some very, very pretty yarn. Very soft and pretty yarn. So... Um, any other links, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, anything else that I'm on, all of the links will be down in the description box down below so you can check it out and see if it interests you. And I am going to go and work on doing dishes probably. I need to do dishes and fold laundry. Fun. But I will see y'all another day. Y'all have a wonderful weekend.